way that liquidity when unemployment is eight, nine percent. And so in other words, is, is, is Plauser's presentation an academic exercise? And until we have some movement on these hard numbers, and we're going to get an, uh, the March report soon, uh, is, is Plauser's notion simply pie in the sky? Um, the other side would be the, the core, uh, core inflation. Again, notice that the Fed admits P, QE1 and QE2 caused some inflation, but not severe inflation. It's, it's uh, rarely above 2% core inflation. Well, Jay, that's, that's my remarks. Now I want to ask you to sort of synthesize what I've talked about with respect to the exit, the original exit strategy as proposed by the Fed, by other members of the Federal Reserve, a, a long, slow, drawn-out process, and then this sudden plosser feeling of an almost instantaneous rate hike, get away from zero rates, and then beginning soon with the meetings, quarter of a point increase. What does that, what does that mean? How does that... What guidance can you give uh, ELCO? What guidance can you give the, the investment managers who have to deal with purchases of securities and the threat of, of rising interest rates as, as these securities hit the market? Uh, is there any, it, does, it, does this mean that, that, our, that our investment officers are gonna have to give up yield and start shortening their portfolios? Or is there still, a, can you make the case for longer term bonds at all? after hearing what you've just heard? It depends, okay? If you look at it, the first thing that we have here is certainly you could look at three different scenarios with three different results. The second piece is, is that we can't act intuitively around these because there's so many different parts and one could make a number of mistakes if one acted intuitively. My feeling is for the ALCO meeting, that what you now have are three scenarios and you want to see what impact that's going to have on your bank if any of these three play out. Sort of a you know worst case, best case, middle case type scenario. With the fact that one of the things here is that we don't know under the plaza, even though he argues it's not going to have, it's going to make long rates go up, but we really don't know what kind of impact in terms of how much long rates will go up. Are long rates because of the Fed going to selling in here going to push things up? He argues no, but he still feels that longer term rates would head up under this in these scenarios. Well, you know, it's interesting he says that because isn't it true that much of the long rate increase is rarely technical? but has to do a lot with longer term inflation expectations. And by implementing his, his shock withdrawal of liquidity, or even the, the 18 month withdrawal of liquidity, wouldn't that, wouldn't that seem to indicate that the Fed's on top of inflation, especially if they announce a numerical target for inflation? And wouldn't that control long term ex inflation expectations, that, which would tend to damper long term That's rates? right. And the thing is, is that that's more the historical norm if you go back at that uh, really when the Fed starts raising rates on the short end is that you really don't see longer term rates head up that significantly at that point because remember the yield curves are so steep. Right. They'll head up somewhat but not significantly where you have more of the rise on the short end. So okay. sort of a twisting of the curve. That's right. Or an and asymmetrical shift, yeah. as you like to call it. So when we look at that, is that that's a scenario. That's a scenario that should be run in here. Some banks are looking at that as the most likely scenario. The second scenario, of course, would be what happens over 12 months if interest rates go up to that 2.5% on Fed funds. The third scenario would be, of course, over the 18-month period with federal funds going up to 35 and then running maybe two scenarios off of that in terms of the change in long rates that's more than or less than in that area. When you look at that, what kind of impact does that have on your earnings, for instance? What kind of impact does that have on your capital and your liquidity? Well, Jay, let me, let me ask you a question as a, as a potential solution to the problem. We're gonna have a rising rate environment under all the scenarios, you agree? That's right. It looks like interest on reserves is going to be part of the strategy. 
would the, would the reserve holdings, either required or excess, sort of be a perfect play to capture the, the increase in interest rates every six weeks? You'd be getting a higher yield on your securities. In other words, would simply standing pat be a solution rather than purchasing securities with the threat of losing value in them if rates rise? Probably the overall yield won't warrant that in an overall balance sheet strategy, you know, when you really look at it. Because uh, I, know, I know you feel that there's tremendous value in the muni market at this point, that they're underpriced. And, and uh, to historical yields, the, the current yields are unbelievable. You can get after-tax yields in the mid-sixes, 6%, 6 am I right? That's right. Yeah. And, and so even if there were some adjustments with respect to the valuation of those securities. You might not see as much in the actual municipal prices. You could argue that you might actually see those head up when interest rates are making other bonds head down in terms of prices. And, and we also know that the Fed's not going to be selling any munis because they don't hold any. That's is right. Is that correct? Okay. And I think that under that kind of scenario too, Ed, is that we move away from this whole fear that every municipality is going to go bankrupt in here, which, you know, once again is a factor that even though Meredith Whitney, you know, was sitting there saying that we're going to have all these multi-billions, hundreds of billions of dollars of defaults in here during 2011, have we seen any yet? No. And, 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 and in our view is that's not going to occur. If you have municipalities defaulting, you have the collapse of American government. It's almost unthinkable. That's right. Yeah, that would be the doomsday scenario in my view. But Jay, get, getting back to this notion of interest on reserves, do you see uh, in your view that reserves could suddenly nudge aside some of the other assets in the, in the bank's balance sheet and, and, and have, a, have a place, not yeah. certainly not 100 percent, but, right. but have, a, have a percentage of reserves it as, as an well interest be. earning Asset. That's right. And the thing is, is uh, but to your point, which is a good one, is that it will move in lockstep with Fed funds based upon, if you look at Plaza's situation. Right. So when we look at that is that, once again, the big piece in here is knowing what flexibility you have in your balance sheet. What are your risks in here? And it really comes down to being able to model these situations. But I think that we're getting a clear picture in terms of what an exit strategy may be. We certainly have a number of different variations on this, Ed, but hey, we have some things that we can get our arms around. Yeah, and I, I want to, uh, again, reemphasize, this is one, one person's view. He's a very powerful person, obviously, uh, being the president of the Federal Reserve Bank. Uh, but his notion flies in the face of the, of the markets. Uh, the, the, the futures market is not, is not showing anywhere near his certainty of a quarter of a point. This is his recommendation. This would be his exit strategy. Uh, I like it. I like the immediate movement away from zero, which I've always thought was, in, was an improper move. You know, they, they, emptied the, they emptied their bandolier. There's no more right. bullets. Uh, the zero bound is a dangerous place to be. So I, I really like the immediate increase to 50 basis points. Uh, and I like the, the sort of published inflation target. And I really like a path, a known path. And here's where we're going to go. And here's when it's going to, unless something, and again, remember, all this is what they call state contingent, contingent on the state of the economy. If the economy were to slow, this would be stopped re and, and possibly reversed. But I, it, it's good food for thought for Alco. If, if you're reviewing our slides, if you're talking and discussing the points Jay and I met, my view is you're, you're doing your job well. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Jay. Have a good week, everybody. This is Jay Brew. And Ed Seafried. Of Seafried and Brew. Thank you.